Hello, everyone. Welcome to our work, Zero Shot Audio Source Separation Model by Career Based Learning from Wiki Label Data. My name is Ke Chen, now the third year PhD student at UCSD. This work is done with the collaboration between UCSD and ByteDance AI Lab. In this paper, we devised a pipeline that can use only one single model to separate any given source from a mixture audio. All you need is a mixture audio and a source sample as a query. Before we introduce the details of our work, I want to show some short demos for you. For example, here we have a jazz band recording. Now, I have a two second harmonica solo track. Then we can use it to separate the whole harmonica lead in this track. Or here is another example that we have a violin recording. Now I want to separate its main legato and sustain part instead of the pizzicato part in the low frequency band. We can use another violin pieces without pizzicato as a query. Then we can separate it. And we have many examples here, which support any given source, as long as you can provide at least one query for this source. We can separate the vocal. <laughs> or we can separate the bass. We can also separate the drum. We can separate the guitar. All this separation are done with our model from a mixture audio and a given source query. So what is an audio source separation task? The definition is very clear. The input is an audio. It is a mixture of different sources. For example, a pop music track with piano, bass, drum, and your singing voice. The model can separate one of the source from this mixture. In that, the output will be an audio of only the sound sources. Depending on what source categories you specify, there are different subtasks, such as the vocal accompaniment separation, or music instrument separation, or environmental source separation, and speech separation. So what is the main problem of the current source separation models? First, many models employ a mechanism, what we call single source, single model, meaning that each model is responsible for only one source separation. If you want to separate four sources, you need to train our four models, even though you, their structure and are similar on the same. You need to consume lots of memories and training costs here. Furthermore, it leads to a second problem, what we call the generalization ability. In a single source, single model scenario, your source are limited in a small number. So your model cannot separate any source that might be unseen in the training set. For example, your model can separate piano and vocal, so you cannot let them separate the guitar or violin. But actually, this scenario is very common in our daily life, where you just receive an audio and need to separate one source, such as saxophone or harmonica. However, there's no model you can find on the internet that can help separate this instrument. Why not? Because of the third problem, the lack of data set. We lack the data set of many uncommon sources. As you know, the separation data set are very precious because they require a mixture data and each solo tracks. 
it is very hard to collect them and this data set duration or size are very short, such as three or four hours or 10 hours. And they only cover some common sources such as drum, bass, singing voice, general speech. However, we notice that the audio data set are not very rare. Given that we have many audio clip data set, such as audio set, it contains 2 million samples, but they are just samples of events instead of separation data. So there is a question on how to utilize this general audio data set into the separation problems. In this paper, we establish a new pipeline to address the source separation problem on many sources. First, our model is built in single model multiple source mechanism. We require only one single model to separate multiple sources. Second, and the most important point, our model is built on a zero shot setting. We do not use any separation data sets, but we only use the general audio data set called audio set. After training, our model can generalize to separate the source that are unseen in the training set. And our model also contains some parts to utilize the wiki label data set into an efficient training on our separation model. Here, we begin to introduce the architecture of our model. It contains three components the sound event detection system, a latent source processor, and an audio source separator. And we use only one data set, audio set. It has 2.4 million audio samples with even labels of 527 classes. And this is the weak label because it does not provide an exact start and end time or the boundary of the happening event in audio sample. Each of sample is 10 seconds. And clearly, this is the general audio data set, but it is not a separation data set because it does not contain a mixture audio or different solo tracks. So we need to build a separation data by ourselves. Why we use this audio set? Because the audio set contains such a large event classes, 527 classes. We think if the audio set can be used in a separation problem, it will benefit the model's generalization ability to more sources. The first step of our model is to localize the event in audio samples. Here, we have two 10 second audio samples with sound events. We fit them into the sound event detection system, then it will output two clips of two seconds. These two second clips are even occurrence localized by an SD system. Why we need to do this? Because the original original 10 second audio samples may contain only a short pieces of event. So we need a system to help us to find a start and end time of the event. And train with this data, it will cause more correct results than we directly train with the original 10 second audio samples. But here we face a problem. The data set does not provide any localization strong label. How we can use the model trained with the wiki label data, but output strong label or predictions. We will talk about these kind of things in the later slides. And after we got two audio clips, we use them in two ways. First, we send them into a latent source processor to get the source embeddings from neural networks. This is the source we want to separate out. Second, we mix two clips together as a mixture, and this is the audio we want to separate from. Now we have the source embeddings and mixture. Then we can do the separation. Finally, we use the mixture and embedding one as the pair to train the model to separate the clip one or with the embedding two to separate the clip two. Each time the model is fed with the mixture audio and the given source embedding. So it is a query based separator to separate the mixture given any query you, you give. So quick get back to our three components. Now we are clear how these three components work in our model. The sound event detection system is to make audio data available for training the separator. The latent source processor is to get carry embeddings from SDD system and send them to the audio separator. The audio source separator performs the main part of the separation to separate the mixture audio given the source embedding query. We first take a look to the sound event detection system. The problem of the sound event detection is that we input an audio clip. Then we have two types of possible output. The first one can, can be a even class label. This is what we call a weak label or the start time and the end time of the even. This is what we call a strong label. One typical question is that if we do not have much strong label data, 
we can only have the event class label, can we output a strong prediction by leveraging the model structure or design? Here, we propose our SED system, STSED. It's called token semantic transformer for SED. The token semantic means that the model is semantic aware of the position of the event in the audio, and it can give the prediction of the start and end time of the happening time of that event. First, the model split the whole spectrum into different patches by a CN layer. It cuts the spectrum into different pieces and send them into the transformer. Second, we adopt a swing transformer to process the input. This is a hierarchical transformer or downsampling transformer. You can see the output and the input of different blocks are reduced from the first block to the first block, fourth block. This reduces the consumption of the GPU, memory, and training time. Then we can support more larger batch size under the same GPU and we'll have the better training convergence. Third, we have a token semantic CN layer. It maps the output AD dimension to the class candidate C dimension. And we take the average of this feature into the final vector 1C. Here, we want the model to treat this as the presence map of the transformer, the event presence map. Fourth, we have another averaging pooling layer to process the output from the transformer into the latent embedding with L dimension. And this is the latent embedding we use as a query for our separation model. Our STSD model achieves a state-of-the-art performance on audio set. We use the mean average position as a mean as a main metric, and we beat the previous ASD and PNN with the MAP as 0.467. Also, we noticed that our STSDD model can work well without pre-training in the image net from the computer vision. This means that the model learns much of the structure and the pattern solely with the audio data. This adds more scalabilities and flexibilities of the model because we don't need to fix the hyperparameters in line with the pre-trained image net setting. Also, we test our model in the localization dataset called SDSED. It is, has 700 samples with strong localization labels in 10 classes. And we use the class wise F1 score to evaluate our performance. We train our model with only wiki label data, but output a strong localization prediction. We can see our model has a higher average F1 score than the previous state of the art PAN. This diagram further shows each class wise F1 score of our model. You can see we beat PAN in many classes except the speech and the cleaner. And the above experiment shows that our SD, STSDD model is one of the best models to help process the audio data for the training of the following separation models. Then we can use it for producing the latent embedding for the source separator. Now we get into the problem of the audio source separation. The audio source separation model is a unit based model, a stack of downsampling and upsampling CNNs to make the model support the cure based learning, we add the embedding layers and mount CN blocks. It adds the latent embedding from the SED system to the hidden state of our separation model CN blocks. And previously, the spectral unit does not need to support the embedding layer because it does only have one target, so separation target. But now we have multiple choice in our source, and the whole model is trained differently with the previous pipeline. The output of the source separator is a separation mask for the spectrogram. And the input spectrogram is multiplied by the mask to produce the source separation spectrogram. And then we use the ISTFT, inverse STFT, to reconstruct the spectrogram back to the separation. And then this is the source separation prediction result. The most interesting thing here is how we do this separation in the inference stage. Or the question is, how we can generalize the model into announcing source or any sources. These are several steps. Suppose that you want to separate one source. You need to collect some clips of this source, which can be easily done by scratching YouTube or record. And you can use our SD system to get their embeddings and average them embedding to get the E query. You can use that query finally to separate the audio you want. In the experiment, we train our model only with the audio set, but we, we test it in the famous MuseDB dataset. It contains 50 songs in vocal, drum, 
based and other stem. We obtained the latent embedding of these four sources from the MuseDB training set, but we never see the MuseDB during our model's training stage. We only see in the we only see the audio set, and we only see the MuseDB in the evaluation stage. The model does not know what source it needs to separate, and it even does not know how mixture audios in the MuseDB are organized. But our model can still achieve a competitive separation SDR performance compared with the supervised models. Notice that the supervised models can only separate these four sources, and they are trained with the MuseDB training data, but our model is trained only with audio set. This means our model follows the zero shot setting, and we empirically show that the generalization from the large audio event source distribution to a separation problem is possible with a very good performance in our separation result. And you already hear in the demo we provide in the beginning of the talk. And you can produce more demos you want in our code and our paper. Thank you for watching this video. If you are more interested at the details of our work, you can check our paper and our code in the GitHub. We are glad you can use them to improve more interesting results and topics from the zero-shot audio source separation area. Thanks.